Well, hey there, and welcome to my channel. I'm Crafty Kathy, and I'm so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. I have four new spring DIY decor ideas that I think you're gonna love. Let's jump on in. Our first project is gonna be this little trinket box. And I found this at a thrift store in Florida when I was on vacation this summer. I love the way that the book pages look like real book pages, even though it is not. It's like a hard resin. You take the little bird off the top and then put whatever trinkets you want inside. I only paid $3 for this. Can we just talk about thrift store prices for a second and how expensive they are? I know here in Chattanooga, they try to sell the stuff as if it were brand new. Let me know in the comments if you run into that at your thrift store also. I'm going to use DIY paint in the color Faded Burlap. And it to me, it's kind of like a brownie gray color. When I was first putting this on, the gray color of this, I couldn't really tell a lot of a difference. Maybe it was my eyes. I don't know. I'm going to be using this in my own home, and I have a lot of lighter colored kind of muted decor, and I didn't want to go white with this. I didn't even really want to go beige, and that's why I chose the faded burlap. It's toned down. It's calmed down, but it's going to be kind of that muted tone that I'm looking for, and it definitely took all of two coats to cover up that gray on this book. Now, after I did my two full coats and I let them dry, look how beautiful this turned out. I love it just the way it is. Like, without doing anything else to it, I think it's beautiful. I'm going to use the Dixie Bells Best Dang Wax because it's the only type of clear wax that I have. So, we're going to use it, and I'm using this waxing brush. I got this from my buddy Lori at Milton's Daughter. That's where I get all of my DIY paint. I get... A lot of my supplies from Miss Lori and she had sent me this waxing brush once it was a pretty long time ago and said try it out and I love it so what I noticed as I was rubbing the clear wax over my piece that a little bit of the paint kind of here and there was kind of coming up see where I'm pointing at so I felt it would be in my best interest to grab some Big Top. It's a DIY sealer. You do have to seal DIY paint whenever you use it. And I was going to do so with the wax. But like I said, I noticed that a little bit of the paint here and there was kind of coming off. And I was like, I am not going to chance the work that I just did. So I grabbed some Big Top and it was very quick. It's a nice little sealer and I went over the whole piece really quick with that. After I got the Big Top dry, I just went ahead over that whole entire piece with that clear wax once again so that whenever I put my wax, the colored wax over the top of it, it will be so much easier to wipe back. We are going to use the DIY dark wax, and as you see on my finger, it's kind of a brownish color. I started off putting it on this wax brush that I bought from Amazon, and then I remembered that that's the one where the bristles come out really bad. That's what's all inside my Dixie Belle clear wax. So I just used a different wax brush, and you see it takes very little. I just wanted a very little, like, subtle hint that those book pages are old. I went over the feet. I love the feet on this thing. They're so beautiful and ornate. And anything that's beautiful and ornate like that, I think it needs a little bit of wax on it just to kind of accentuate it. So I went all around my piece, especially in those book pages. Then I worked my way around to the spine of the book and I definitely wanted to add some dark wax there on all those little pieces on the spine. I thought that would be really pretty and just give it the right pop that it needed. And I don't have a lot of patience, so I just kind of went over the whole area really quick. And then I just grabbed, I was looking for a, a like a dry rag and I couldn't find one in my craft room because y'all know I haven't been out here in over a month. And so I just used a dry baby wipe. 
and it was so much easier to wipe it back because I put down that clear wax first. It just creates like a slick surface, if you will. So when you add wax on top of it, whether it's black wax, white wax, dark wax, whatever, it just makes it easier for you to wipe back. And that's what I wanted because I knew that I didn't want to put a lot of wax on this, but I wanted it to be enough where it's going to look really pretty and accentuate all the beautiful aspects of this piece. I love the little bird and his feathers. I wanted all that to stick out. So I covered the whole birdie up and then I just wiped all that back too. This was a really easy project and it came out so pretty. I can't believe I got this piece for three bucks because I'm telling y'all in Chattanooga, this probably, they would have had about a $15 price on it at the thrift store and it probably was only about 13 bucks as it was when it was brand new uh, that's just thrifting in chattanooga guys so yeah i'm just wiping it all back and when i finished with that last little bit of putting the wax on i realized that i had the wax all over my fingers and i wasn't going to put it on the inside but I made fingerprints all in the inside of that thing. So I thought, well, let's just go ahead and add a little dark wax inside, which I did. And I just did it very lightly just to kind of cover up where I put my fingerprints in. And I just wiped that back and it came out so beautiful. You are my shelter from The next one is this 8x8 eight eight plaque that I found at the Goodwill. I only paid $1.99, but you see it came from Hobby Lobby, and it's normally $14.99. So I thought that was a decent deal for $1.99. I really liked the texture that it had on it. It had like a raised texture or something. It, I can't really describe it, but I really liked it. Kind of like a roughed up texture. We're going to use DIY beadboard, and I just gave it one simple quick overcoat. I did not paint down the sides because they were a beautiful dark brown, and I wanted to leave them that color. And I was so happy to get to crack out my new mold that I got from Miss Lori at Milton's Daughter, and this is a Frames 1 mold. I had been wanting this thing forever, and I'm so glad that I have one now. The possibilities are endless with this mold. All I did was use that amazing re casting resin, and you get it at Amazon. It's linked in my Amazon store, and it literally only takes 10 minutes to set up, and you're good to go. I'm going to use these prints that I did on my regular printer in this one napkin. Now, what I did on these is I just pulled these prints off the internet, and I did use that Rust-Oleum Times 2 Matte Clear Spray to spray over them. Because sometimes if you do stuff on your printer and then it gets like a decoupage placed over the top of it, you know, like to seal the decoupage, the colors may run. So always just spray it before you use it to make sure. Now, those of you that watch me regularly, know that I do not cut my decoupage pieces. I like to have them torn because it just gives it a better look. So what I do is just spray a little bit of water on my silicone mat and I use a tiny paintbrush and I just go around the image where I want it torn at. It makes it so easy just to tear perfectly. Now that's not saying that, that I don't use images that are like squared like this image or anything like that. I still use those type of images, but I always make sure that I tear the edges just because it just, I don't know, it just gives it such a better look. I never have scissors around my decoupage unless I'm just like doing a rough cut to cut the piece off. 
So all I'm gonna do is go around each of these. I know that the two bunnies are gonna have to be pretty small to fit on the two molds that I picked for them. So I went around and just got basically their little heads off there. Now we're ready to move on. I realized that this is gonna be a little bit shorter. The picture is a little bit shorter than what I needed in this frame. Do you see what I'm talking about here? So what I did was I just tore the side of it off and I'm gonna use that on the bottom. That's the beauty of decoupage. You never know the difference. It looks like it was meant to be. Look at that. And that's the side of the picture. And you're never going to know that it was, you know, the side of the picture. For this one, I'm going to use my permanent glue stick. And y'all know me, if you watch my channel, my favorite method of putting decoupage on is the easiest. Use a glue stick. It makes life so much easier, y'all. And I just like, this one is a permanent because I do want this to be permanent. I still use the washable ones, but I use it on stuff that I may want to change later, you know, that's going to be here for my house. But if I'm selling something, I always make sure that I use that permanent. So anyways, that's enough about the glue stick, but it, I mean, it's very important to kind of note that, you know, if, if you've never used a glue stick to do your decoupage, honey, I'm telling you, it a, opens a whole new world. It's, it's so much easier. And well, so what I did was just made sure everything was exactly where it's supposed to be. I ripped off a little piece there, and I'm just gonna put my uh, glue stick on the back of this and put this down. Once I get my picture down, my next step is to take this resin frame and I'm going to use my Tight Bond Quick and Thick. It's a, actually it's a wood glue, but most of us DIYers use this on our molds simply because it works amazing on them. Now I'm just going to place the frame right over the top of my picture and see where I was telling you how it was shorter and you can never know anything's different. The next one that I'm gonna use is this cute little bunny that was on the napkin. And I'm just gonna add my glue stick on the back and just look at the difference when I lay him down at how much that brightens up because he has a white background behind him. That's why I always kind of prefer when I'm doing decoupage to have a really light colored background because you see how the image just pops. Now, I'm very impatient. I should have waited until this dried to take off the excess pieces, but like I said, I'm impatient. So I used my fingernail and I used this little um, tool that I have to kind of you know, show me where the corner is, where I need to cut. And then I got the X-Acto knife and just took the excess off. I love the way that this looks in this frame and it's just the little bunny's head. It's so sweet. And the next one that I'm gonna use is this little brightly colored bunny. And he was a lot easier to cut out because he was in that oval frame. And so I just went along with my X-Acto knife and just kind of cut it out and did the exact same thing as I did on the first one. I had that really sped up, but I went super slow because it was still wet and I was afraid I was going to pull up the picture, but thank goodness I didn't. And then I just put a little bit of that quick and thick glue on the back of those two pictures and placed them where I wanted them on the frame. I sealed these with a Pentart decoupage varnish that I got from Lori over at Milton's Daughter. I just felt that it would be best to seal these. Now, sometimes when you print an image on your printer and you put something wet over the top of it, like a Mod Podge or this varnish, there's a big chance that those colors may run. But if you remember, I was telling you that I used that Rust-Oleum spray called Mac Clear before I did anything, and so I know these colors are not going to run. I noticed when I put that Pentart Decoupage sealer on the top of that bottom bunny that he wrinkled up a little bit. If you remember, he was that napkin, and napkins are very prone to wrinkling. So what I did was just take my saran wrap on my finger and get all of the wrinkles out. 
I'm going to use DIY's paint in the beautiful color Apothecary. It's probably my favorite green paint that was ever created. It's so beautiful, and it's a perfect spring color. Now, I'm going to use this brush that has kind of like a little pointy end, because if you notice, all of those frames have these beautiful details. I want to get down inside all those little grooves, and that's why I'm using this paintbrush. But I went over this whole picture on the front and painted it with that beautiful color apothecary. I definitely believe that I made the right choice in my paint color because, honey, it made this picture just come to life, and it's so beautiful. I have a confession to make. I use these Dollar General Store basting brushes as my paint brushes. They're pretty much the same thing as a chippy brush, and you get two for a dollar. Now, that's a deal. They work really well, guys. The bristles don't fall out a lot. I love them. So, what I did was just put a little bit of DIY white wax on my brushes, and I went around each of the frames. I really put a lot of the white. Super easy. I grabbed some of these peat pots from the Dollar Tree. These are the larger images, and I painted each one white. Now, I didn't get a full coverage. I just kind of haphazardly painted them. I'm using the washable glue stick on these because I will probably change out the images, and it'll just be easier to get off. So, what I did is I already have my napkins torn, and if you notice, I put a little bit of that glue stick on my fingers because it helps you to get those layers taken off and you see here all I'm doing is putting down a little bit of my glue stick and I do love the fact that this is purple so you can always see where you put it down at you know and you just rub over and that's all I'm doing on these it's super easy and simple there's not a wrinkle in any of these and they do have that rough texture look about them but that's because the peat pot has that type of texture and it comes through and it's just really pretty and I love it. I'm just taking my little hand sander here and getting the excess off of the bottom of the napkin and that one is absolutely finished. It's that easy, guys. And I have to say these are adorable. Look how cute this is. So then I'm moving on to my next one, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Put a little bit of that glue stick on my fingers because it's just easier to get the layers apart. And this is a beautiful bird. I got these um, napkins off of Amazon. They're in my Amazon store, and they weren't expensive at all. I'm doing the exact same thing, just putting down a little bit of glue stick. And look how easy this is. Just letting it lay down where it wants to. I'm not trying to force the napkin, and then I lightly use my finger to rub over it to make sure that it's down there. I love the way that these napkins look with that texture on them. You know, the peat pot, how it has that texture. It just comes through so pretty on the napkins. It's not even picking up on camera, but it's really beautiful. And so here I'm just going through again with my little hand sander. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the last one. This is one of those little projects that you can do for spring. And it just, it's so simple and easy, but it really says a lot. You know, if you have these sitting out, say, in your living room with some little fresh flowers in them, it's just so beautiful. Now, I just styled these with some fake flowers and a little bit of Spanish moss, but it's a cute little idea to bring a touch of spring into your home.
Now this last one is super quick. You guys know that every time the season changes that I do candles um, in each season. Well, this is not going to be any different. We're going to do the same thing. I've got this gorgeous decoupage paper from my friend Brandy over at the DIY Struggle. Now she has a small business and she makes this decoupage paper. Now, I know in the past, when she's made these decoupage papers, they sell out the very day that they come out. Like, she can't get enough to sell because they are at a great price, and they're beautiful. I mean, and a lot of people love the thought of supporting a small business, and I definitely do. So, what we're going to do is just use two of these pictures, my favorite two off of these, and we're going to wrap it on our candles, just like I do every season. Now, I'm going to leave her information down below, just in case these pictures, or this paper, I'm sorry, is still in, you can go get you some. But even if the paper is not in, just keep her in mind, because she puts them out for every season, and they're just gorgeous. Now, I'm using the washable glue stick on these because you guys know that, I, like I said, I change them every season. So, I want these to be able to just peel off. And literally, that's what they do. I put them on battery-powered candles. And when you use that washable um, glue stick, it just peels right off. Now, all I'm doing is just putting this on my candle. And then I'm taking my little hand sander, and I'm being careful because it is candle, it's a wax, and I'm just taking off that excess. And I'm sorry, but I can't wait. I had to flip off the lights and show you what this looks like when it's lit up. Is that not beautiful? What a great way to bring a little touch of spring into your home. Like maybe you're bedridden or you're having health problems. These are the easiest DIYs to do. And plus it's keeping your mind busy. That's one reason why I love to craft because it keeps my mind off of things that it shouldn't be on like the pain that I have in my back or, you know, things like that. It keeps me busy and it gives me a purpose and I, and I always feel accomplished when I do something and I'm proud of myself and I love the idea of doing my own home decor because I can do, do it to my taste, you know, and I'm not buying it. I'm not spending a bunch of extra money. Most of my stuff is either you know, repurposed from the thrift store or something that I'm reusing from my own home. But it's such a simple way to bring a little bit of spring into your home. I hope you like this one. That's all for today's video. I just want to thank you so much for coming and spending your time and crafting with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would, please hit the subscribe button if you're not a part of our family because we would love to have you. And if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. And leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this. And I'll be working on some more to bring to you really soon. Lord willing and the creek don't rise.